what is have there been any particular takes in the media that have maybe like from the Republican side, like we, there's the Democratic cringe stuff, but like from the Republican side, like that have really annoyed you about Kamala Harris, just like on a personal level. You know, I am critical of the way that I think Kamala has maneuvered throughout her career, but I don't want I don't want the Republicans to talk about like her being overly ambitious or something like like that's why. So this yes, this is a double standard because when I am talking about the way that Kamala has maneuvered in her career, I am talking about the ways that vulnerable people have been affected. When the right is talking about the way that Kamala has maneuvered throughout her career, they are talking about racism and sexism. It's not about the people that she's harmed because they don't care about harm. It is about a a, a a black and South Asian woman doing what she needed to do to advance herself in this very, very white, very rich arena of federal politics. That is what upsets them. It upsets them that she has so much power. I understand that, that the basis of our critiques are not the same. And so I now that puts me in the position as a black progressive woman of being like, that's you're being racist, right? Like this, this is sexism, right? Like this is not about policy. This is not about uh, the stances that she's taken or her ideological commitments. This is about racism and sexism um, and your aversion to quote unquote identity politics. And so now I have to call that out and defend Kamala. I think uh, Derricka Purnell wrote a really great article for The Guardian about the kind of bind that progressive women are in when it comes to Kamala Harris, because we have we have to defend her against the racism and the sexism because that stuff trickles down. I 100% I agree with you. Like that's another aspect of why Trump super importantly needs to go now is because he has allowed for four years, like racism never <laughs> disappeared or dissipated as much as Ben Shapiro would love to believe it has. It, if anything, there's just been like someone trying to like plug their finger in the like dam that's currently about to crack of like racism and trying to tamp it down. And then Trump just burst through all that and let the racists run free until the anti-racists started like really branding themselves and getting onto their own and statues started falling. And now you're seeing like a little bit of a pushback in the um, East Coast sort of like opinion article sort of world where the idea of anti-racism as opposed to post-racism is a factor because Donald Trump has caused this festering environment of racism and sexism. That's nothing to say of like the sexism. And even though like he's completely survived the Me Too era, like everyone says cancel culture this, cancel culture that, Trump is chilling. <laughs> and, and a lot of other these abusive motherfuckers are chilling too. But like that's beside the point. Like he has allowed this stuff to fester. And unfortunately, Kamala Harris is going to have to bear a lot of the brunt of it. And we as progressives and I'm talking about like people of color who for some reason like black people or even Indian folks who are sharing this like oh she's not really Indian or she's not really black stuff like don't don't let them divide us like that we can't we, we got to see this for what this really is and have these difficult to have and nuanced conversations that require like um a lot of research and thinking. Like I admire how you can sort of pull these articles out of thin air. I, my, my brain can't do that, but it's really respectable of you. But like reading a lot of different people's opinions and um, reporting, real reporting about this stuff in order to have a nuanced conversation of, there's a difference between racism and sexism towards like Kamala Harris's efforts to advance her career. But you can also look at what she did in her career and how she responds to it as an indicator for how she might behave based on real policy choices that are tangible that we can point to. Um, and that's where the nuance is had. Again, like, I'm so starstruck that we're having this conversation. Um, so yeah, that was a really annoying thing for Republicans to have done. Most of the progressive stuff, I don't know, how, how are you with the KHI folks on Twitter? How, how is that relationship? Um, so, so K -Hive, the K Hive is not progressive, right? Like, like those are like small C conservative black people generally who would stand Kamala. But I just think that this 
idea of like having political stance is so stupid. I think that the K hive in particular is like, you know, I'm like the queen of nuance. I hate this, but like, I understand that because Kamala um, has the identity markers that she has, that she is going to be subject to a particular kind of malice, a particular kind of nastiness. So on that hand, I understand why the people who support her or who want her to thrive in this political space, why they would try to rally around her. But I think that standing a politician is the dumbest stuff. Like, are you freaking kidding me? If we are talking about holding these people accountable, right? If we are talking about having a, a quote unquote ruling class, having a political class that actually cares about how we feel, the way to get there is not by trying to insulate them from every single criticism. Because what happens if you are a member of the K-Hive and Kamala does something that you don't like, right? Like, does that mean that you you have to stop being in the K-Hive? Does that mean that you're actually gonna speak to it? Like, no, like we we want people who ostensibly work for us to understand that you're just not, you're not gonna get a pass. like. It really bothers me because, again, I feel like we've learned nothing from the Obama-Biden years about creating, like, propping these people up as celebrities, right? Like, we get nothing. They, they will give us nothing and, like, tell us to be grateful for it. That's not the position that we want to be in. Yeah, so if I weren't freaking out about, like, the sound quality, I would be, like, snapping my fingers in applause, like, yes, go on, go on. Um and like, uh, I, I appreciate the nuance, but I wish there was like a mode of video stuff, almost like the new feature on Twitter where you can restrict the type of people who can respond to your tweets, where you could just be like, okay, no filter, here's the K-Hive things. Cause I have some no filter K-Hive stuff that I'm gonna refrain from saying because I'm not gonna nuke myself on my first proper episode. But um, th th there's the abuse towards um, people who, aren't black are black especially people who are black and identify in the lgbtq community like the the abuse is fucking ridiculous like and i've been very wary and careful of like the bernie bro narrative um acknowledging like certain toxicity in um bernie's political faction while also saying there's a lot of toxicity in most of the major like big political factions there are some toxic warren folks there are some toxic Kamala folks and there weren't toxic booker people or toxic like uh, Klobuchar people because there are very few of those people. I mean, like Yang Gang was also its own like separate ugh, thing. Um, like I love sixty percent of them, but like th there was a lot of. I don't like to make that much about any particular candidate's thing because I don't think K Hive has anything to do with Kamala Harris, nor is it at all representative of her as a politician. I want to make that clear, but um, I, I do think there is an interesting double standard on like who's like political fandoms get seen in a good light versus who's don't so my the criticism i dislike the most was a daily beast article i forget who wrote it but someone shared a tweet that was just like a side by side of one was bro no bernie's like toxic sexist bernie bros and like how he's not dealing with them or some paraphrasing like that and then this one was like kamala harris Kamala Harris is VP and we have no choice but to stand. <laughs> it's like, it was written by the same person. And I, I don't take Daily Beast or any of these like rags seriously as far as their opinion goes. Their reporting's like decent at best, but like, um, it, I, I, I don't get how people lose their fucking minds. Like they, they make political cults. And I love how you pointed that out because it is one of the most problematic and truly the most toxic thing I think about our political culture right now. Yeah, I agree.